I have some great news about Herman, but more on that later. What I like to start off with today is about product reviews. Now, I like talking about the, um, the kind of thing that I get offered to review, it's get sent for free, but of course, being a motorhome YouTube channel, um, the stuff that they want me to review it's got nothing to do with motorhoming. So I want to cover a few of those things. First of all, I've had companies approach me about reviewing their e-bikes. Now e-bikes, they're very expensive, but unfortunately I don't have the room for them to be quite honest. And again, I don't want to become a, a, a channel about e-bikes and motorhomes. I want to be a channel about motorhoming. So I kind of put them on the, uh, the back burner for the moment. I don't, Typically, I don't say no, I just don't respond. So it kind of, I feel like it can, keeps it open. Recently, I've been contacted by a company who sells men's rings. Uh, now, these rings are extremely nice. They're made out of different materials like titanium or meteorites even, or even dinosaur fossils. And they, like I said, they look amazing. However, I don't wear rings, I don't wear any jewellery, not even a watch. I guess the only item of jewellery I wear are my glasses. So I don't feel that I'm kind of the best person to review that kind of thing. Um, might interest a lot of people, but again, am I the right person? Probably not. So I've, I've kind of, you know, put that again on the back burner. Um, now this next one, this is kind of weird, office supplies. <laughs> yeah, have a look at this piece of paper. These pens. No, but these, these especially, especially want us to uh, want me to review plastic storage boxes. Bizarre. It's just bizarre. Why would you want to review? Would anybody be out there looking for a review on plastic storage boxes? I don't know. Weird. Uh, I guess the um, the next one. Um, it's kind of linked to Herman, a 20 ton bottle jack, 20 ton. That's enough to lift a lorry. Herman, most motorhomes are three and a half tons, but 20 tons, uh, it also requires a compressor. So um, it's not something that I have. Uh, it, it means that you could probably, if you fix it, sort it out, you could probably lift Herman and a couple more motorhomes with this just one bottle jack it's probably not possible you'd have to you know but uh, yeah that's how powerful this thing is um but no i i've, I've just <laughs> that's ridiculous and it's quite small as well it's not i mean it's not a huge thing um the the next thing uh now this was very uh, it is the most related motorhome and camping thing that i've ever been offered but it's also, I think, the strangest thing. It is a cardboard toilet cassette. The idea being that it's disposable. Uh, it's a composting toilet, basically. You're turning your Thetford cassette into a composting toilet. And what it does, it uses a number of plastic bags. You have the liner, and then you have the, the bag you poop into, into the hole. And inside there, you put kitty litter. Now, what really put me off is we're kind of trying to figure out, you know, stop people from dumping their toilet waste on the side of the road and, and into the beautiful countryside, right? So where would you dispose of this kitty litter with your number ones and twos in it? I, I guess you'd have to find a place to put it, uh, like a, um, a place in a tip or whatever. If they have this, um, wherever you put sanitary towels and, and uh, nappies and what that, that kind of thing. But I can imagine people just putting it in bins, trash bins on the side, in the park, for instance. So I just didn't like the idea of that. And I don't know if it's the kind of thing that we would want to review or even promote on the channel. So that's, uh, that's the list of... Uh, I've had some other stuff as well, but not anything that's worth mentioning. And I'm being uh, watched by Robin just over there. Very loud at the moment. So, moving on to plans, uh, 
so we've got bank holidays coming up, spring bank holiday, Easter bank holiday. We've got those planned, those, those uh, dates planned in our diary for going out in Herman. Can't wait. In fact, we're going away this weekend, uh, which is when you'll be probably watching this. But the bank holidays, we're going to Dorset. Uh, we're going to go and see uh, San Abbas, which is that huge giant on the side of a mountain si uh, hillside, which is famous for something. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, and then we go into the Isle of Purbeck, and there, that is where Corfe Castle, Studland Bay, it's all on the coast, that kind of thing, and the Arne Nature Reserve, which you may have seen if you've ever watched uh, the BBC Spring Watch. They filmed there a few times. Uh, in May, we go into Suffolk uh, on the uh, Posh Cats Rally. And uh, that's about it for the moment. Um, yeah, we haven't got any big plans like big two-week holidays. But I, I kind of want to go abroad this year. I want to go onto the continent, you know, France, that kind of thing. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, sort that out. Viewer's story time now. Uh, this time, it's from Jan Mills. He calls himself Mad Mills for some reason. Um, he doesn't explain why. And he is from Mid Wales. Now, he, he doesn't seem to have much luck with his motorhome. And uh, I get the feeling it's a bit of a money pit. Uh, but he sent me this email, which I'm going to read out to you, just before Christmas, just gone. At the end of 2019, my wife qualified as a Band 6 paramedic, all paid for by herself through the Open University and was told that there was no job for her in the ambulance station that she had been working out of for 12 years, and she should have to find somewhere else to do the 300 observed hours to completely qualify. She found a station 65 miles away from where we live and had four weeks to find somewhere to stay while working there. B&Bs would not let her stay during the daytime after a night shift, Airbnbs were too expensive and there were no shared houses local to the station. So I looked on eBay for a campervan or motorhome with a limited budget and short time. I found a left-hand drive Deathless Globetrotter is Sprint H5970 based on a Fiat Ducato 2.8 JTD being sold by Motorhome Depot. A three hour drive later and it was ours at a reasonable price or so I thought. The first trip to the wife's new station went okay for four nights, but the wife was on her way home when the gearbox blew up. Less than 300 miles and the motorhome depot told me it was sold as seen and nothing, they could, uh, and nothing to do with them. So I sent it to a gearbox company in Cardiff. They told me it needed a hole in the, chass in the casing welded, welded up and a new fifth gear. That Christmas, my wife had to sleep outside the ambulance station in the, four, in the back of my Ford Fiesta for two nights. Or, or terrible. Uh, then COVID hit. She was living out of the motorhome outside the ambulance station for two and a half years. We saw each other one weekend a month if we were lucky. The wife had eggs thrown at the motorhome a few times as she had to park on the side of the road. I put ambulance staff vehicle stickers on it and the eggs stopped. I think that's probably the best news of the whole story, to be quite honest. Uh, three years later, and my wife put in a transfer closer to home, and good job too, as not long after the fourth and fifth gears went again. 2,000 pounds later, the gearbox had to have the hole re-welded, uh, and all the internals replaced for new ones by a different gearbox company. He then goes on to mention the many other things that went wrong with it, including pulling to the left, which is similar to what Herman has or had, uh, resulting in brand new shocks, springs and st uh, strut tops, needed a new radiator pipes and thermostat because the radiator was leaking, needed new brakes and handbrake cable, that was a MOT failure, and he flooded the engine after driving into a puddle, which was deeper than he thought, requiring an engine rebuild and £3,000. Then, after a few weekends away, it stopped working altogether. After several garages looked at it 
uh, one finally figured out that during the engine rebuild, the mechanic had left the wiring harness dangling over the engine mount and rubbed the outer cover away, exposing the wires, which then shorted them out. He says, I was lucky it didn't burst into flames. He's, he's right there. But we're not done there yet, folks. There is more. It failed the MOT, again. The front wheel bearings needed replacing, but he replaced the lot just to be on the safe side. He says, we had had lots of fun weekends and weeks away in the motorhome, but the bathroom has always been a bit of a problem. Two weeks ago, I got under the motorhome just, to, uh, just checking to see if it needed any undersill, and then I see it. All down the side, under the shower room, the floor is damp and rotten. So the last, week, last few weekends, I've been, out cutting, I've been cutting out the damp and rotten wood from the underside, and I have taken out the shower room completely to fiberglass the shower tray. That is a huge job. Someone had already tried fixing it with glue and chewing gum and hiding it behind some extra panels. You, you just can't hide rot, can you? You can't fix it just by hiding it. So we spent Christmas fixing and refitting the shower room in time for the new year. Thanks, geese. Uh, all, uh, on the plus side, we are now and uh, we now have an almost new motorhome with all the new bits. Yeah, a bit like Trigger's broom, don't you think? So, Mad Miles, did you fix it? I've not received uh, an update from you uh, uh, yet, but uh, hopefully you have. Fingers crossed, and um, hopefully we'll be able to tell everybody how you got on in the next video. So if you have a story that you'd like to share with others about your motorhome, new or old, one from the pre from past or one that you just recently bought, then send us a, your story to me and, and some, some photographs and I'll, I'll put uh, the email address in the video description so that you can do that. Herman News now. In the last channel update, um, I mentioned the MOT, going through the MOT, getting a pass and the advisories. And one of those advisories was that the steering was a bit rough and the guy when i spoke to him about it he said yeah it feels like one of the bearings is going on the, on the uh, top mount there's a bearing where the suspension goes into and it, uh, as you're steering it allows the suspension to move uh, and he said that seem, feels like it's uh, it's um worn out but it's not gone yet because uh it doesn't seem to be drifting anyway i've noticed it drifting on uh long journeys down motorways fast journeys you know that kind of thing uh, but i've also noticed over the last few years and it's been getting worse this is that when we're slow driving like around a campsite um you hear this knocking when i turn the wheel it goes, goo, goo, and you don't really hear it on camera so i can't you know give you a, a video of it but uh it, goo, 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 it, go, it goes kind of that kind of noise and it just feels like it sounds like it's been getting worse so finally we got it fixed and I, I tell you what, I am so pleased <laughs> that we have. Um, I, the garage, I, uh, I mentioned, I told the garage that I wanted the parts so I could do a video. So when they remove them, uh, I've got them. So this is the top mount of the suspension. So that part goes into the chassis, as it were, the top of the, uh, the wheel well. And uh, this part here goes on top of the spring and the strut goes straight through the middle and there's a nut on the top there. And then this is the bearing, okay? And that goes on like that and it allows the, uh, the thing to, to, to move around. And as you can see, it's quite, it's quite rusty in there and uh, obviously a little bit greasy, but it's very brown and rusty. Now this is the other strut top mount and this is the bearing for it. Oh, but Ads, you're not holding anything. That's because there wasn't one. There was no bearing on the side which was making the noise, which is really confusing. Now you may notice that this one's newer. It's, not, it's a lot more shinier. 
Now, looking back over my videos, where we replaced that, because the that was actually split. Where I, reason why we replaced the new with a new one was because it was split. And uh, you can see, <laughs> this is so crazy. You can see the bearing is still attached to the old strut top mount. So we didn't put it in. It must have got stuck on there and we just kind of just not saw it or not focused, not saw, not saw, not saw it, didn't come off. So looking back, all that problem that we had with the, the drive shafts and whatever is because of that, because we forgot to put in the bearing or we didn't notice the bearing, it hadn't come off, and, you know, off, the, off the old strut to, uh, mount. The drive shafts, we replaced the drive shafts because there's this knocking, we thought it was that. We replaced the inner track rod ends because we thought they were worn and they needed replacing. So all it really was, was this thing, this little thing here, that was the problem. It didn't have one. We didn't notice it. Which, in a way, if you think about it, well, why didn't you replace them in the first place? Didn't occur to me. <laughs> the, the difference now is it's much smoother to drive. It is, it's like driving uh, a new motorhome. The steering is like really smooth and quite loose as well. Uh, not loose as in all over the place, but I mean like, oh, it's, it's effortless to drive now. Uh, which um, so, I'm just so pleased that we got it sorted out in eventually. Um, so that's it. Um, don't forget to send me your uh, motorhome stories. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.